back to our FreeBSD Friday series. I'm Deb Goodkin, the Executive Director of the FreeBSD Foundation. So welcome to the second presentation in the series. So last week, we introduced you to FreeBSD, and if you missed the talk, you can watch the recording. So this week and next, Roller Angel will show you how to install FreeBSD on a virtual machine. So the format for today's talk is more like a classroom lecture. Where Roller will show you each step for installing and setting up FreeBSD. Then you'll be able to try it out on your own by watching the recording with the ability to pause and rewind. So if you have a question during Roller's talk today, go ahead and um, post it in the IRC channel and proceed it with a cue so we know it's a question. And one of us will step in and try to answer your question. And Roller will most likely continue talking because remember, we only have one hour here. So let me tell you a little bit about Roller. So he's a fellow Coloradoan. So I know him from our local meetups and Roller has given FreeBSD workshops here in Colorado as well as at the SCALE conference in California the past two years. Roller is a FreeBSD user who spends most of his time helping people learn how to accomplish their goals using technology. He is an avid FreeBSD user and Pythonista who enjoys learning all the amazing things he can do with FreeBSD and Python to solve issues. He is getting more involved in contributing to open source projects in his spare time. He uses FreeBSD and Python to help him learn more about computers and to assist him with his many side projects and help him automate and manage various aspects of his life. Gosh, I really need that. Roller also teaches workshops on FreeBSD to help others get up to speed in the classroom setting as well as online learning environments. And now I'll hand it off to Roller. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Roller Angel. Uh, I'm going to start presenting my screen now, and I'll show you what you need to do to get started. Um, so to get started, first, we're going to need to have a virtualization uh, program. So if you just go to Google and search for VirtualBox, we want to get virtualbox.org and go to, to the downloads page. So if you're on the main homepage of VirtualBox, you'll just see a big button right here you can click on. Or if you landed on the download page from Google, then you're looking for the platform that you're currently on. So this is a Windows machine currently. So you just click on Windows Host, and it'll start downloading the program. Um, that'll only take a few seconds to download. And then once we have it downloaded, we can go ahead and install it. And just accept all the defaults. There isn't really anything in the installer that you need to change. OK, so we're just going to go next. Just don't worry about any of the settings. And it should, it should prompt uh, about a driver make sure you say yes to that on, on the Windows machine and as well on the Mac. Yeah, but what a virtual, uh, what VirtualBox actually does is it just mimics a, a real computer. So that way you don't have to take the machine that you're learning on so I'm going to hit always trust and then install. Um, you don't have to take the machine that you use every day for school and erase it and then try and do all these tasks on that. Uh, instead, you can have have a your machine that is already running, and then you can have um, your learning environments as virtual machines. And so you, once you get the hang of it, then you, you can move on to installing uh, FreeBSD on your main computer if that's how you want to roll. Okay. So here we go. We've got uh, VirtualBox opened up. Uh, it's, it's, this is what it looks like on the icon. So if you just open that up, you'll see there's a, a new. So that's what we want to do. Is we want to create a new one. Um, 
And the first thing it's going to ask you is just name your operating system. So we're just going to type free BSD. And you'll notice that it changed the type and version to FreeBSD here automatically for you. So just make sure that you have that, those two options set and then go next. And we can keep the defaults here on all of this, actually. So we'll just keep going next through here until it gets to the point where it says create, which we just did. Okay, so now that it's created, it's going to want to use an installation disk. So when you hit start, you'll notice it'll even ask you, um, this is a blank machine. Where's your start? What disk would you like to use? So to get a disk, we need to go back and search. So you can use Google to search, or you can just go directly to freebsd.org. So on the home page, you want to get the, the latest uh, disk. So let's go to download FreeBSD and scroll down a little bit here to where it shows the, this is the latest version, 12.1 release. And the installer that we're going to use in VirtualBox takes this AMD64 image. And then you'll see there's a number of images here, but we're just going to grab disk1.iso. So just click on that and it'll start downloading right away. So depending on your internet speed, this should only take just a few minutes to download. And once it's done, we're going to locate it over here in a virtual box. So this, this is uh, equivalent to, on a real computer, taking the, uh, the uh, like if you actually had this, uh, the CD with FreeBSD on it and putting it into the computer and then booting up the computer and starting it from the disk. And that's, that's how you originally bootstrap an, uh, an operating system when you want to install it onto a computer for the first time. Every other time, then you start it off with the hard drive instead of the CD drive. And you'll see that a little later on, I'll show you that you actually have to take the CD out. Because if you leave this CD in and you go through the whole installer and re reboot, it'll run the CD again and you'll be back into the installer. So uh, just keep that in mind that the CD is just to get FreeBSD installed onto the hard drive and once you're, once you're done with it, make sure you take it out. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, and then also while this is downloading, um, if you want some commands to follow along, if you just go to bsd.pw and click right here on workshop, then uh, here's some commands. That, that you can use to follow along. Okay. So it looks like our disk is, is just getting to its final bits, and then we'll be ready to start it up from here. Okay. Uh, there is one uh, uh, thing that you can check too, if if you want to. Um, so if you come back here and you go to installer images, you'll notice that um, there's this one here at the top that says check some SHA-256 or check some 512. Um, if you uh, if you know what checksums are and you like to check them, you can uh, use it. It's just a text file, but if you open it um, on Windows, if you want to look at it, you have to use like a text editor, but um, like Notepad or something like that. But it's it's just a, a piece of text that shows you the signature of the disk if you were to run a checksum on it. So that just makes sure that your download wasn't corrupted and that you got the 
little download. But with with the with the, my internet, I, I'm not so worried about it. I'm sure the download will work. Okay, so the download's done. Let's go here and let's click on Add. Let's add the disk image, and then we just have to go find where it is. So on the computer, since I downloaded it in Google Chrome, it just went to Downloads. So let's say Downloads, Open, and now it opened FreeBSD 12 release disk one image. And we'll choose that and make sure it shows just like this on the screen and then start. And now the machine is booting up for the first time. And these little messages, so here's the, the FreeBSD start screen, but you'll notice you have these little messages from uh, VirtualBox, so you can turn them off with this do not show message again after you read it. And then for me, I'm gonna change this to scaled mode so that I can show you the screen a little bit bigger. Like that. Okay, so welcome. So to get started, uh, we're, we're gonna click in the screen and VirtualBox is gonna tell you, basically since you're running a computer inside of a computer, it's gonna take over your mouse and keyboard for the FreeBSD computer. So you're not gonna be able to use your mouse and keyboard for your other computer. And if you want to get your mouse and keyboard control back, you have to use the host key. So the host key is currently fine as right control. That means if I capture now, when I move my mouse, you're not seeing it. Um, but if I hit right control, then I've got my mouse back and I can go and search uh, the internet and, and go back to my regular computer. So just so you know, that's how the virtual machine works. It, it actually puts your mouse and keyboard and plugs it into the other machine. And if you don't want to keep being reminded, just say, don't show me this again. Okay, so we'll start by clicking enter on install. And what we're going to do is we're going to continue with the uh, default key map. Um, I'm just using a US, standard US keyboard uh, on a on an ASUS computer. Okay, now you can give it a name. Uh, so I'm going to call my computer FreeBSD. And we're not going to change any options here, but uh, these are the, the the just the components that come with the system, and then you can optionally select other ones if you know what you're doing. Um, but right now, since we're just getting started, we're going to leave them as the default. And here's where you can choose to set up your hard drive. So we have two options. Both will work fine. Um, we're going to go with the ZFS for this guide. Um, so just use your down arrow keys till you get to auto ZFS and use enter. And now there's just a few things you need to configure for GFS to work. Um, one is the Stripe type, uh, the pool type, which we're just gonna use Stripe. So if you go down one and enter, then you can choose Stripe here. So we'll just enter again, uh, just cause we're just gonna do the basic install. We're not getting too fancy. Um, but if you were getting fancy with your hard drives, um, you can read up on in the hand, FreeUSD handbook which I should cover real quick. Uh, if you go back to freebsd.org, you can actually read the handbook right here. So just go to documentation handbook and there's guides on all of these different options and it goes into detail about what they do and what, uh, what you might use them for. So we're just gonna go with Stripe. And so the way that you select that VirtualBox hard disk is with the space bar. So use space bar, see how it puts a little star in there and selects or not. So just make sure it's selected before you uh, push enter on the screen. Okay, so if you go down a couple, you're gonna see that the name of your pool is just Z root. You can change that if you want to, to something like, um, you know, just whatever you wanna call your storage. So just the name of your storage, you would just type here. And this is all we're gonna change on here. So if you go up, you can proceed by just pressing enter. And then it's just gonna ask you if you're okay with destroying this hard drive because 
once it starts to install an operating system on a hard drive, it, it it's going to wipe the whole hard drive out and then set it up from scratch. And since uh, we just created this virtual hard drive, it's everything's fine. So we're saying to say yes. You can see it's actually pretty fast. It just goes through, unpacks uh, the files where they need to go, and then runs some scripts to set set it set up previously for the first time. And then right after uh, FreeBSD gets set up, um, the first thing you're going to need is is an administrator account, which uh, on on these systems is called a root account. So. We're going to set up the root user and in just a moment. So start thinking of a, a, a good password for your root user because you're going to have a password for not only your user account that you use to sign into the computer on a regular day, but you, there's actually like a super user account um, just to manage the system, which is called root. So set a password here. And don't worry when you're when you're typing on this screen, you're not going to see uh, you're not going to see any feedback because it doesn't want if someone was standing behind you and you were setting up the system and they seen how many characters were in your password, that's it. It just eliminates one one uh, attack vector. It's just a security thing. They don't want to show how many characters your root password is. So there you go. Okay, if it doesn't match, just try it again. And there you go. Once you have typed the same password twice, it'll move on. So the next step is to set up the internet connection. And on VirtualBox, they just it's called EM0 Intel. So just return or enter on that. And we're gonna just go through the auto configuration of, of each of these uh, for the internet. So we're just going to say, yes, we'd like to configure IPv4. Yes, we'd like to just use the, the, the dynamic IP address. And then just say yes on on IPv6. And then Slack is, is like the DHCP for IPv4. You say yes on that as well. And if there if there is if it's set up on your network, this will this will just automatically configure, and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so we're just going to go push tab. So we were up here where it's asking us to do a search, um, but we're just going to use tab down to OK and just say OK. Okay, so now we got to set the clock for. Uh, the main clock. So let's just go down here and say where we are. So we'll say we're in America. And then come all the way down here to the United States of America and, and push enter. And then find your time zone. And then enter. And it'll ask you, is that abbreviation look reasonable? Yes. And we can skip because the time's already set up. We we can skip both of these. And here we can just push. You'll notice there's a few options that are selected and a few that aren't. And we're going to change a couple of them. So just for simplicity, we're not going to set up uh, SSH in this demo. And then um, for make sure that the time is always up to, up to date, we're just going to select both of these NTP. Uh, this will synchronize when the computer starts, and this will just run run in the background and make sure that the time is always right. So we're going to just go ahead and once once you've used spacebar to select both of these, then we're going to push return again. Okay, on this screen, you can change some of these settings, but we're just going to keep them all um, the same for your test machine. So, um, once you once you make your uh, once you get more comfortable and and you make your machine that you want to use all the time, I'd recommend enabling this secure console um, because it makes it so if there's a way in the handbook that it, it'll show you how you can get into 
what's called single user mode, which is just a like a you know when when you're at the arcade or something and it says you know the like seed maintenance or like the computer's having a problem and then there someone has to come up to it and fix it. There's a secure console you can get into and you can fix problems. But if you don't have the space bar selected, then you don't need the root password to get in there. And so technically you just change the password. So it's good when on a training computer because if you forget your root password, you're gonna have to start all over again from scratch. So it's nice to be able to go in and change the password. Okay, so we're gonna say okay. And uh, would you like to add users to the system? So this is where we get started adding our own user account. So we'll say yes. And now uh, I want our username just to be Roller. And Roller Angel, we're just pushing enter after each of these. Um, we'll leave the user ID empty because we want the default. We'll leave the login group empty because we want the default on that. And now it's going to ask, um, would you like to invite Roller into some other groups? And since I know, you know, I'm going to be using this computer to do several different things, um, like setting up later on, I'm going to, sh uh, like next week, we'll show you more that you can do with FreeBSD besides uh, going through these installers and, and, and getting comfortable with uh, a Unix operating system. But some of the groups we're going to want to be in is, is called wheel, uh, operator, and video. So just type each of those words with a space between them and press enter. And we'll use the login class as the default. That usually just has to do with uh, internationalization, things like that. And here, uh, you'll notice in the, in the, Right next to my my prompt, it just says SH with little uh, squares around it, like that. Um, that's selecting a shell for you, um, but the shell that I'm going to show you how to use is called TCSH. So we're just type TCSH and it'll uh, set that up for your user account. And the shell is just the the place where you type in your command. Okay, so the home directory, just let it be its default. That's where it wants to go slash home slash your username. Um, definitely don't want to modify any of the permissions, so let's keep that default. Uh, and now it's asking, do you want to use a password for your authentication? The, and the default's in those little square brackets, which is yes. So we'll do enter there. It, no, we don't want an empty password. That's a good default. So we'll enter there. And no, we don't want a random password. So we'll do enter now. It's finally asking you for the password that you want to use. And this is just like before, you type it twice and it asks you, it, it'll keep asking you if you don't type the same. Which I didn't type it the same. So now it's gonna say, use next password, no. Use random password, no. Okay, what, what password would you like? And then you type in your password twice and it'll say, would you like to lock this account? And just say no. And then it gives you a chance to look over everything you just did. So the username, your full name, the groups that you wanted to add every uh, roller to or yourself to, and then your home directory, your shell. So just say yes if that all looks the same as mine and enter. And now, uh, would you like to add another user is what's asking you. Uh, we're gonna say no, because we're already, uh, and before we leave here, uh, if you look, uh, this is just all the steps that we went through really was we, we added a user, we set up your root password, we chose a name for the system, we set the network, we chose some services. Those were things like um, NTPD, which was the, the network time protocol payment that updates the clock for you and keeps your time going. Um, the system hardening is where I showed you that you could turn or turn off the uh, secure console and there's a bunch of other settings on there. We chose our time zone. And then the last thing um, is the handbook. So let's actually just install the handbook uh, by going all the way down and hitting enter on this. And it's already, if you notice, got the 
little asterisk on English, so I'm going to keep that. Just push enter. And now it's going to connect to the FreeBSD quarterly package server, grab the uh, handbook, and install it. Yeah, and, and once it downloads it, it, the install will go lightning fast. There it is. There are a lot of pages in there. Okay, cool. So it brings you back to exit again. So now we're ready to exit. So let's click uh, enter on exit. And this is where you want to make sure to say yes. Uh, because if you say no, your machine will just reboot itself uh, back to the CD again because the computer is now installed onto the hard drive and we don't need the CD anymore. So it's asking, would you like to make any further modifications? So we'll just say yes. And the modification we want to make is to turn the computer off. So you, to turn the computer off, you can just type shut down, dash P for power off. And then when do you want the computer to shut down? Just say now. And we'll just say enter on that. And you'll notice it's saying shut down now. And it's turning off the computer. And then it tells you how long the computer's been up, 15 minutes, 30 seconds. Okay, so the computer's off. Remember, this is where you get the handbook, and this is where we're following along with the, um, some notes. I'll do that. So, now that it's off, you go to the machine itself, click on it, and go to settings. And over here in storage, you'll notice that there's a, FreeBSD.VDI, but then there's this disk. So the FreeBSD-12-1 release, uh, disk one, and if you make this bigger, you can see that that is what it says, disk one the whole way. Um, so what you can do with it is take it out. So click on it over here and click on this, the, this little disk icon and remove disk from virtual drive. That's how you take a CD out. Now it says empty, say okay. And we're ready to, to go. Um, but before you go, since since you just set up a, a, a computer on a virtual machine, one cool feature of virtual machines is you can clone them. So before we even do anything else, in case you make a mistake and you wanna get back to a fresh install of FreeBSD, all you have to do is clone it right away after you just made it. So if you just right click on this, you can click clone. And we'll just use everything, the all the defaults, even the name. And just let it let it do its thing and that'll that'll just give you a uh, a Another ver another version of what we just did, so you can feel free to make any changes that you want to your machine without worrying. Uh, do you have to go through the installer again, set it all up all over again? If you make a mistake or you don't know how to go back. Okay, so let's go to this FreeBSD machine and start it up. And now you're gonna see what FreeBSD looks like. Uh, for the first time. So this is just telling me that I'm in that scaled mode. Uh, if you're not in scaled mode, then you won't see this message, but I'm using it so that you, it's much bigger and you can see it uh, here. Okay, so you notice there's this countdown and then right here, boot, boot multi-user is the default. That's why it says, uh, you could just push enter if you want to skip that. And then here, if you notice that it's a uh, bright white and it's going through every, until right here, now it's gray. And there's a little bit of white and then gray. Um, so the bright white means that uh, FreeBSD is, you know, prodding and talking to different pieces of, of the computer. And then the, the gray stuff is messages from, from programs running on the computer. So. 
if you see something coming from the right way, that's just a, a piece of hardware. Like if you were to scroll up, it would tell you exactly what processor you're using, uh, how many cores it has, and how much memory your computer has, and everything about it. So here we're going to log in as root. So let's type root. So this is this is this is what you get. Like previously, previously turned on, and you get this login because without logging in, you can't really do anything. And if you if you want to erase the whole screen before you even get started, you can hold down Control and push L. Usually, um, but uh, that's once we get logged in. So let's log in first. Okay. And once you're logged in, hey, once you're logged in, if you want to erase the whole screen, you just hold down Control and push L, and the whole screen will go away. Uh, so that you can focus. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is um, look around the system. Um, we've we've got a new system, but uh, we just installed it from a disk. So what what you want to do is make sure that you're up to the latest version uh, of FreeBSD. So the way you do that is you just, there's a program called FreeBSD Update. And if you read about it, so there's a there's a manual for it. So you type man as a shortcut for manual and the name of a command. And it'll show you a manual that you can read about that command and what it does. So it tells you right there, FreeBSD update is the name of a command that will fetch and install updates, binary updates to FreeBSD. And, and then if you just use the down arrows, It'll tell you different things that, that you can do, like fetch and upgrade. So I'll show you a couple of these commands that we're going to use uh, to get the latest version of FreeBSD going. And remember, to erase the screen, you just do Control L. And, or uh, if you wanted to, you could you could type the word clear, and that does the same thing. Okay, so FreeBSD dash update fetch, and then we want to install those updates. And we'll just push enter there. So that'll go connect to the update server on FreeBSD. And you'll notice that it, it fetched a few files, and now it's comparing the latest version of FreeBSD with the version you just installed from the disk. And even though you just installed the latest version from the disk, there's still the disk is uh, not as new as something that just got changed, you know, today or yesterday or since the disk was created. Uh, and if you go back to the page on FreeBSD, you can usually see when the disk was created. So FreeBSD just continues to to update, and so you want to make sure that you just regularly get in the habit of checking for updates. Uh, to make sure you're on the latest version. And you'll see yep, there's uh, some patches that it found, and it just goes through as quick as it can and applies those, those uh, pa patches one at a time. And then now it's just going to go and apply. Which shouldn't take too long. Okay. And now we're on this screen. So this screen is giving you a chance to read. Uh, since since the FreeBSD update is a shell script, it's using a command call, um, which the the command is a type of program. It's, we're using less usually. Uh, there's it's, there's one called less and there's one called more. Uh, but what they are are they're pagers and they they show you information one page at a time. And you can skip through those pages 
when you're ready. So if you push spacebar, it'll skip to, or you do Q on, on this particular one. So just push Q, and then I'll show you another piece of, of information. You push Q, and then on this 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 pager, since it goes further than the screen, you can actually do the spacebar thing, and I'll just show you one screen at a time. Uh, you can also just use the down arrow keys or the page down button. Or if you don't want to read it and you're not interested in reading all of it, you can just push Q. And then it'll skip down to the next step, which is to install the updates. Uh, this was just showing you, uh, the pager was showing you one page at a time, all these different uh, files that it was going to change for you. OK, so it's done. And if you want to learn more about pagers, you just type man less. And you can read about uh, it's the opposite of more. Uh, <laughs> It'll tell you right here in the description that it's just a, it's a pager and it shows you, it just shows, shows you information on your terminal. And then it tells you a little bit about it. Um, so that's what we're gonna do there. Uh, now that we've gone ahead and updated the system, we want to update the packages. So the system and the packages update separately. So to update packages, you just type package update. And OK, everything's up to date. And then if you want to check if there's any upgrades for your packages, so package upgrade. And those are the two commands that you need to run each time. And that will set up your uh, package system. And you can learn more about package or typing man package or pkg and it'll tell you all about it um, but basically it's the tool that we use to install packages like if you wanted to find a package you could just say package uh, search like firefox and it'll see if it has one and there it is it's got firefox version 78 which is a web browser based on Mozilla or there's Firefox ESR and when you install packages on FreeBSD you don't have to type the dash and all the numbers so if you wanted to install Firefox you could just type package install Firefox but we'll do that later what we're going to do now is get a program so right now I don't want to be root anymore I want to be my, a regular user but in order to be a regular user I'll still need to be able to, I want to still be able to install packages and update my system. And to do that, I need to tell the computer that Roller on this com computer, since I'm, I'm root, I'm, I'm the manager of this computer. So the manager needs to set up an account, uh, administrative access for the account Roller. So to do that, it needs to use a program called uh, sudo. So super user do, which is, or you can say, just say sudo. If you want to say sudo, I usually always call it sudo. So anyways, to get it, you just type package install sudo. And that'll go out, find sudo the package. If it needs any extra stuff, uh, like this get text runtime, this index info package, it'll grab whatever it needs to get the program and then ask you if you'd like to do that or not. So it even tells you how much will be downloaded. So we can just say yes, we'll proceed. And there, it's done and installed. So uh, sudo, there's only a few configurations you really need to do to, to set that up. Since when we did the install, I chose to invite Roller to the group wheel, right? Wheel is a, a way for the administrator of the computer, instead of inviting every, instead of setting up access for each person individually they can set up access for anybody who's part of the group wheel and then just allow new users to be invited into the wheel group and then the commands can all be set up properly that way so that's how we're going to kind of do it as well so we'll just uh, erase the screen or you can just type clear or control l and uh, to get into where the sudo configuration file is the easiest way um, there are text editors in, in, in FreeBSD, and one of them is called VI. So if you just type man VI, you can read about it. It's a screen-oriented text editor. 
and um, this, this should tell you a little bit about it, but what we're going to do with it is, is there's actually a shortcut command for just for sudo, just for this one uh, configuration file. So instead of using a text editor to edit a file by typing the name, usually you would just type vi and then the name of like, um, you know, test.txt or whatever it is that you're trying to edit. And it would open up something and you could start typing and then, you know, save your text file. Well, in, in this case, we want to edit the configuration file for sudo. So they actually have a shortcut called vi sudo, uh, which is cool because uh, then you don't have to memorize where the configuration file is for this uh, for setting up sudo. So you just have vi sudo and enter. And here you are. We're in the file. So the easiest way to get to where we want to go in this file is uh, vi has like some. VI has a bunch of shortcuts that you use to jump around. Um, so what we're going to use is the search command. So there, to, to search, you just do forward slash. And you'll notice at the bottom of the screen, you can see that little forward slash. Uh, so we're, we're searching for wheel, because that's the wheel group. And then we push enter. So slash wheel, enter. And you'll notice that it, it found wheel somewhere in the middle of the screen. Uh, so we want to go, it says uncomment to allow members of group wheel to execute any command. Uh, you'll notice like right on these lines. So to go down one, you just push J. J goes down a line. Uh, zero will take you to the beginning of the line. And X will delete a character. And we want to delete another character. So we'll learn more uh, about this text editor later, but that's the simplest way to get the text editor to do what you need. We just needed to uncomment that line. This line has to start with the percent wheel and with no hashtags in front of it. So to um, to leave, you can either push escape, colon, WQ, and that'll write and then quit. Or if you don't want to do it that way, um, you come down here. If you want to do it the other way, so you can just hold down Shift uh, and do capital Z, capital Z, and that'll save it as well. Okay. So now that we've made that that change, we're ready to leave. So if we just type exit, uh, we're leaving as the root user, and now we can. Finally, log in uh, as our regular user. And type in your password. And there you are. So now it says roller at FreeBSD. And if you want to know who you are at any time, you can say who am I is one of the commands. And it'll just uh, tell you your username in, in case you didn't know, because these. Uh, Command prompts are configurable, and once you start changing them, uh, you can you don't even have to show your username if you don't want to. Um, so that's why they have a command to tell you who you are. And plus, you can use that for scripts uh, to ask who's the user that's currently logged in, and then do something with, with that. Um, okay, so we're in. Uh, so now we're just going to test it out and make sure it works. So let's type sudo dash i. And that's to enter interactive super user mode. So it's just like being logged in as root. Uh, so you just push enter there, and it'll tell you that uh, we trust you. We have received the usual lecture from your system administrator. So with you know this like the, uh, just a warning to tell you that you're about to become root. So type your password, and now you're in. So it even says root at FreeBSD, but we logged in with our password uh, for our user account instead of uh, the root password. So now we can keep those separate. And sudo also has like the, um, logs, so you can see who was the one that logged in to the root account from their user account and things like that. Um, so the uh, the first thing we're going to do is uh, give this 
machine a unique ID uh, that can just be used. There's different programs that, that, that use it. You can even use it if, you, if you're writing programs. Um, but there's something called um, DBus UID Gen. So let's make sure it works first. Um, just type that, DBus dash UUID Gen. And if it doesn't show up, it's because we need to have DBus installed. So we'll just go through and get some packages out of the way. So uh, DBus is a, um, a package that comes when you're trying to start setting up their computer to do uh, more video stuff instead of just all text-based things. Uh, and the main one that's in control of that is called Xorg. So if you just type package install Xorg, you'll get it. It's part of that. Um, something uh, that we'll just go through real quick is we're using VirtualBox. So FreeBSD actually has um, some support for VirtualBox. So to get that, you need to type in. So you can do two packages at once with package. You just have to put a space in between them. So we're typing package install xorg and we're going to type package uh, just a space and then here's the next package that we want. So it's called virtual box. And then dash ose dash additions. And then enter. And you'll see uh, quite a big list. Um, if you push the pause break button on your computer, uh, now you know what it does, right? On 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 all on all these keyboard on most keyboards, there's this pause break button, um, and you're wondering what, what if you're wondering what it did. If you if you ever press it on FreeBSD, you can start using the arrow keys and pause and see what just flew across your screen because all this text flies by so quickly. Um, sometimes you want to go back up and read it. Um, so if you look right there, there's DBus 1.12.20. Um, that's why this DBus UUID command didn't work is because it doesn't have that program yet. But anyways, uh, push pause break again to return and from your break. Okay, so here's all the packages. It's about a, a 250 megs to, to download. Would you like to do this? Say yes with the Y and enter. And then it'll do its thing, uh, go out grab all the packages that it needs, and put them on the computer. Um, which, since it's so many packages, this, this might actually take a minute. Um, so, if you get an error, um, it could be because of uh, there could be many reasons. Um, maybe just my Wi-Fi is not so great where I'm sitting. So you can always just type what it tells you to. If it says run package update dash f, go ahead and do that. And then we'll, we'll try this again. So. All I did was push up twice. Um, so I'll show that to you one more time by just saying no here. So you can either type history, and that'll show you everything that you've been working on, or you can push up, and it'll go through the history one at a time. So you don't have to repeat commands and type them over again. You can just push up. Um, and if, if you get a giant list of commands, uh, and you don't want to go up, 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 up all the way to it, um, you can actually just use the exclamation point and the number listed all the way to the left there in that in that left column. Um, so I want to run command number 17. So if you just do exclamation point 17, it'll it'll run command 17 again. So yes. So why? Let's try that again. Yeah, it, it was my internet. Um, because if you'll notice, it was 173 packages that I needed before, but now it only needs 93. So, uh, remember earlier I was talking about a checksum. Um, yeah, uh, earlier 
I was talking about a checksum. So FreeBSD actually does checksum for you uh, on uh, on each one of these packages automatically. So what it was saying earlier, like if I click pause break and I scroll back up, we can read what it was saying earlier. Uh, and then it told us to do the, the dash F. So if you look again real quick, it's a little bit of, it tells, it tells you right here, it says, um, the package that it was trying to grab and the one that you downloaded, uh, basically they just didn't match. Um, so it couldn't, it couldn't continue. So something with your internet, it downloaded a, a faulty package and it needed you to uh, re-download it. So anyway, so we'll unpause, see where we're at. Yeah, so that's that's really the, the basics. Now you're in, you've got an, an account and you can install packages. Uh, there's a lot you can do with packages and that's really uh, where you start to, to see, you know, FreeBSD really starts to come alive. Is, is throw a couple of packages on there, tell tell it what to, what you want it to do, and uh, FreeBSD is not going to do too many things without you asking it to do it. So that's what's really nice about, it, especially in the day day and age where computers are doing so many things automatically for you, you're not really sure what they're doing. Um, FreeBSD does a great uh, job of of letting you be in control of what you want it to do, and then. That's why it's so fast too, because it's only doing exactly what you asked to do. Uh, and yes, FreeBSD is very fast. Uh, you took all the time. Okay, so uh, instead of waiting for this package extension song, we're, we're going to call it uh, here, and we'll see you next week, where we will move on to more configuration and setting up uh, some of these programs and, and seeing a little bit more of what you can do uh, with the FreeBSD install on your computer. So thanks for joining. OK, well, I'll jump in real quick here. I want to thank Roller for doing this. I um, I thought you did a excellent job, and it was really easy for me to follow. And so I can't wait to watch the recording and um, and get as far as you got us today. And, um, and next week, we'll do uh, part two. Roller will continue. And um, and so in the meantime, if you have any more questions, please feel free to post them in this IRC channel. And um, and we'll have the um, the recording posted hopefully soon, so you have the weekend to play around with us. So um, so anyway, I hope you all will join us again next week with Roller to continue. And always feel free to look at our schedule online. We have some good other good talks coming up to introduce you to different areas of FreeBSD. So anyway, so thank you.